This is New Game Chronicles, where I offer a chapter-by-chapter -chapter breakdown of my immediate thoughts, reactions, and insights as I experience a brand new game. For our inaugural series, I'm playing through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Please note, there will be spoilers up through this point in the game. And with that, let's move. Hey, we may have ended chapter one with a fight, but we keep calm and carry on, don't we? And who boy, everything about this town is so calming and so soothing, it really lives up to its name. Here we go. I love how they recreated calm here. This is immaculate. And seeing it during the day is really, really cool. Just this room in the inn, even. It's awesome. What's this? A gift from our humble establishment. Though it may not look like much, it should help you to break the ice with those you meet. What? Queen's blood? <gasps> yes! Of course, this is only the most recent in a series of crises. Multiple reactor bombings, followed by the fall of the Sector 7 plate, culminating in this unprecedented destruction, caused by a massive tornado which swept through Sector 0, mm. 1, and 2. After a briefing with Shinra investigators, Mayor Domino released a statement declaring the tornado to be, quote, weather warfare perpetrated by the infamous insurgent group known as Avalanche. The administration also suspects the involvement of Wu Tai and has begun investigations into the matter. Okay, so that's in both worlds. That's in Zach's world and in Clouds. So that news report is the exact same phrasing as what we I saw in the opening. I need to keep this place looking spick and span. Don't want to let Broden down. Especially after he insisted I focus exclusively on cleaning. And two, after a break. Finally. Rough day yesterday, huh? You've been waiting for me? I've been waiting for a chance to thank you properly. Without your help, I'd still be in Hojo's clutches, trapped in that lab. It was nothing. Even so, I owe you a debt, until it's paid. I'm going to accompany you. Oh, uh, if you're getting your equipment checked, have them check mine while you're at it. Sure thing. It's got a backbone. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, look at this place. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, it's exactly like I always imagined it. It's immense. It's got this steampunk German aesthetic. Ah, oh, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. kind of off doing their own thing. I noticed. Say, uh, this tank remind you of anything? <laughs> yeah. The place I made that promise to you. You remember the dress I wore? It was one of my favorites. Uh, the light blue one? 
with a bit of green in there? Yeah. This is such a quiet, peaceful town. This town is incredible. It's exactly what I imagined this town might look like and then some, even when I was 14 years old. This is a careful recreation of the original city from the German architecture to the winding alleys. I just absolutely love it. It feels like a real town. So, so much more bigger and fleshed out than the brief spot in the original game. You want to go and explore this town and it is incredible. This chapter has some of the most incredible and memorable NPCs I've ever seen. My gosh, like just weird side conversations like this one. Too late. Too late. Or am I here too early? I got so lost in the drama of all of these locals. It took me forever to get through this town. Especially, did you see the two girls who realized they had been dating the same guy? Good God. You hussy, excuse me? <laughs> Actually, we're a pretty good match. This is for him. Hey, quit it! Or this full concert? I, I swear, I heard three full songs from this guy and I wanted to stay for more. Look how happy Cloud is. Hey, Cole, how y'all doing today? Yeah, it's me, your boy Akira. Still with Shitter Records, still. It's been a long seven years since I hit the road. And the world hasn't always been kind. But I never lost sight of my guiding light. Even when the plate was blocking my view, I always knew that one day, I'd make it big and come back a star. <laughs> Haven't quite yet, but I'm working on it. Even though I left Midgar behind, my journey won't end here. No, sir. It's only just begun. I dedicate this next song to all you guys and gals still finding your way. Gotta walk on. In the gutter, it was really weighing me down. The still sky hanging above, my heart was aching for love. You think we can I get had to get out of the harvest festival. Felt like a gillionaire with her, even when I was broke. We're not together anymore. You think we could but get to I hope this song reaches her, wherever she may be. This one's for you, Golden Sparks. Do you? Remember the night, it was you and I Golden sparks blooming bright Flowers that filled the sky As we floated in the quiet Miles and miles above all Just scared to speak We could go riding off my career. The tale of a small town kid that the big city got the best of. Midgar Blues.
Thank you! You're too kind. Seriously, this is nothing short of a dream come true. And to all my fellow dreamers, I hope yours come true too. While I could talk about this town endlessly, there's a few key things that I found super interesting lore-wise, because that's why you watch this channel, right? First of all, I am absolutely blown away by the lore of the land. In the Summon Quest line, we learn a ton about the god Titan and how he created the grasslands. Here's what I loved about this. We're getting backstory to the world itself and the role of these divine beings in its creation. Now, I've long held that Titan is a god of creational aspect in Final Fantasy games, a defender of the earth. In this story of his creation of the grasslands by causing it to rise from the water, creating a super healthy and fertile land, it was so interesting. And I'm thrilled that we're actually getting backstory in this game for the summons and the world around us. It's amazing for somebody like me and my particular interest. Next, we're hunting for Mako Springs. Going to these springs and using Chadley's doohickey device thing, we get to learn about the world around us. And again, it's all about the lore for me. I absolutely love this. Now, these Mako Springs offer not just insights from Chadley, but it offers insights from the live stream itself. And I think that's so cool. This is a lot like what I alluded to in my video on the train graveyard. These are specific thin places where the veil between divine knowledge and temporal reality is the thinnest. And it's in these locations that we get added lore of the land as well as some special knowledge of the live stream. Just a really cool addition. Next, we got to talk about Broden. Broden runs the inn at Calm, but he has an intriguing backstory. He and his childhood sweetheart had plans to see the whole world. Eventually, though, she became an engineer and he would go on to the military. But as Red points out, Broden joined Soldier and was therefore experimented on by Hojo. He's facing degradation currently and is growing more and more ill. He even warns Cloud that this could be in his future. And that, my friends, is what we call foreshadowing. Also curiously, Broden's desire to see the world is coinciding with some activation of the Mako inside him that's calling him to take the same journey as the black robed figures. It's really interesting to see how his summoning as a former soldier coincides with his inevitable journey to the reunion of the black robes and Sephiroth, which means, if I'm a betting man, I would say we are definitely going to be seeing him again later. When I left Calm, I was introduced to the open world, and can I just say that I think this is the way to do an open world game. I loved Elden Ring, I adore Tears of the Kingdom, but when you have a story-focused game, the way that they are doing this open world with so many optional things and yet a compelling narrative drive, where you have freedom and yet there's still a, a pushing toward the story, I just think it's it's exceptional and it absolutely works for me. I found the open world outside of Calm, the grasslands, to be infinitely interesting. I took so many photos, just me and my friends going and hanging out in the fields together. It was so, so fun. Anyway, I ventured outside of Calm and the amazing grasslands to explore the region around Midgar, and I cannot even describe my shock when I began to hear the electric guitar riffs of Hollow. Wow! This musical piece hit me in the feels in a way that I was not quite prepared for. What does it mean? I just kept asking. I know we equate this song with Cloud a lot, but I also equate it with Zach. And I wonder how intentional it was for them to put this song around this region where Zach had his last stand. And knowing that he's experiencing some other reality in Midgar, what does this mean? Are we supposed to imagine that his existence is hollow, that Midgar is not what it seems any longer? We don't know because we can't go back in because of a Shinra blockade. I just think that is so, so cool. Now, I could keep gushing about all the things in this chapter. My lord, the open world is perfect. It's so good. It is flawless. But I want to close on the Midgard Stormer fight. Right now. Oh. It is 
disguised itself as an island. Gee, I had no focus.
Aerith. <sighs> it's good to have you back, Cloud. Sephiroth? I knew he was strong, but still. Those guys are looking for him, too. They've got to be. Yeah, I kind of get that feeling as well. Let's not lose her. Not only is it an incredible reinterpretation of the fight itself, and so crazy intense, and I almost died in the last second, by the way, but that cutscene afterward left me with so many questions. Cloud being dragged underwater, and then he was saved by Sephiroth? Now, did he summon Sephiroth, or did Sephiroth just show up? Or was this a vision of Sephiroth from Cloud? As the party clearly isn't seeing Sephiroth the same way Cloud is in this chapter. Which makes me wonder if Sephiroth was really the one who killed the Midgard Stormer. Or did something activate in Cloud that gave him the power and will to survive? After all, it was Sephiroth in Chapter 2 of Remake who told Cloud, you have to live. All this leads to a very meta moment that harkens back to the original game where the player this time asks this central question. Did Sephiroth do this? Or was it Cloud? The mental breakdown of Cloud appears to be the central focus of this game so far, much like I said in my video on Kabbalah, and I am here for it. Everything about Chapter 2 is a delight, from Chocobo Billy to exploration to every charming moment, and yes, Queen's Blood has taken over my entire life, and I'm going to turn it into an intramural team at the University of Alabama. I, it's gotta happen. Regardless, that is it for Chapter 2. I spent a heinous amount of time in Chapter 2 just exploring incredible, incredible open world. Um, as always, remember to keep the discussion based on Chapter 2 for now and avoid spoilers for future chapters. I know that these ideas may be off base and I'll get to those revelations as soon as I finish the game. But for now, uh, that's what this series is about, letting you in on my thought processes as we go along, even though they may be off base in light of later chapters. So that's it for this Chronicle of Rebirth. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And until next time, walk tall, my friends. Got that?